Okay, start whenever you, you are ready. All right, thank you. Daniel, <laughs> um, how long have you been working on this work? Um, I think I've been working on it uh, since before quarantine, so I think like maybe two months. Or so. Oh, wonderful! Yes, it's such a beautiful piece, and you play it so beautifully, and it's such a um, song of comfort for this time as well. <laughs> yes, um, I just um, before we start working on this work, I just uh, wonder uh, when you play this piece. Um, what kind of imagery or emotion or feeling does this music inspire you to um, feel? Can you share it with us? I think it like kind of, um, I, I think I kind of think of it as like a flow. It kind of the sea brings you wherever. Uh, you mean, flo sorry, I couldn't quite hear very well. You mean floating at the sea? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Floating. Yes, that's beautiful. Yes, and um, could you tell me like what's your favorite part um, uh, of this music? Where that is, like I which think, part is it? Huh? My favorite part of the piece is mm -hmm. probably the ending, since it kind of is like there's a diminuendo. And yeah, so just the chord. Yes, it's such a beautiful like from the really dramatic moment, then it kind of decays. It's very poetic. It's yes. Okay, so do you have your music nearby so we could take a look closely? Yes, I and you can go get it. Yeah, it's right here. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, 
So I think um, with this work, um, it's the Chopin Nocturne and the writing is so exemplary of Chopin's style, which is the left hand has such a um, steady, it's very simplistic, right? It's, um, it's just very... The left hand stays really calm and simple throughout the piece, right? And all the expressivity, the imagination, uh, and the freedom, it's all in the right hand, right? I think to mem uh, maximize that kind of um, contrast uh, and really to bring out the beauty of the right hand, I would suggest trying one more time, maybe just the opening, um, to really pull these two hands apart. Uh, can you try once, maybe just the left hand alone, and to really try playing it as soft as you can, as if you are not really pressing down the keys, but you're as if you're just brushing um, the keys on the surface, just as soft as you can. Yes. Can you try the left hand alone in the beginning? Okay. Daniel, I think it's already much uh, better. I think uh, I would just um, say one thing. Um, just be careful. The the eighth note, just be careful. The fourth note, um, the fourth note, and the eighth eighth note, just be careful. The fifth finger, um, try to avoid an accent uh, because you are trying to jump back to the bass. So sometimes the fifth finger end up having an accent. But you really should sound like two parts. So be careful, don't to give an accent on the fourth and the eighth note, uh, eighth. Yes, could you try one last time, the left hand? Actually, let's try one um, one more time. Thinking almost um, there is a diminuendo after each phase. So yes, let's try. Not put too much weight. Yes, on the fingertips. Yes, now let's try adding the right hand to it. And let's imagine, I think right now the balance is like this. But now I think we want to really move them really far apart as if the, uh, the melody is like the moon and the, the left hand is like what you talked about. It's like the ocean, it's like the sea. And the melody should really be far apart um, from the ocean and just floating above it. So we can... <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try bring these two hands apart and really um, give all the the beauty and the attention to the right hand. Yeah. Yes, very good, very good, Daniel. Okay, so I think the um, the other thing I wanted to um, um, say about this work is it's very interesting piece. The um, the phrasing are quite square, right? They are all four measures, four measure, four measures. Um, it's very square, and uh, a lot of the parts are repeated, and uh, some are ornamented and. Uh, altered, var varied each time, right? I think when I study a piece like this, I, I always find it so fascinating to identify 
like which part is being repeated and which part is um, changed. And for the repeated um, sections, um, for example, if the phrase um, in the beginning, how does this same phrase mean um, different things, perhaps in the end, if when it appears again, or like in the first page, how this um, phrase repeats itself four times in the beginning, right? How how does it change? Does it change or it doesn't, right? I think it's um, really fascinating to try to imagine what the composer trying to um, say with these repetitions. Usually they try to mean uh, different things each time. And also with the um, altered part, which we could also see a lot of the times the melody remains mostly the same, but it's slightly ornamented or slightly more, um, uh, the harmonies change slightly, right? So how does this change um, make us feel a little differently or how does it inspire the listeners to feel a little differently each time? So I think let's work on the first page a little bit. I'm going to break down um, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is to break down the first four measures. I will be playing the left hand as written, um, unchanged, but for the right hand, I'm going to only play the basic, the most basic and structural note. So. This is a dominant and then back to one. That's the, the skeleton of this uh, opening phrase, right? And now I'm going to move on to um, adding a little bit note, a little more note to the right hand. And we have still don't play everything. I'll leave out most of the ornamenting um, materials. Only, only play the basic contour of this melody. So. Daniel, could you try playing this version of the Nocturne, just leaving most of the um, ornament, ornaments out and only play in its simplest form? Okay. the second version with a little bit um, the melody, the complete melody, but without the dotted rhythm, without the ornaments. Uh, you added a little bit of the um, ornaments in there, but that's okay. So how does it, um, now we can go back to play the original version and, um, and let's see how that feels this time. Why don't you play in its original version? it feel um, between like after you play the first two versions how does it feel to get back to this 
full version. <laughs> it feels like um, I can like uh, shine the most important notes. Yes, and also we just cherish um, those added things that makes the melody so beautiful, right? Because the melody is really, uh, really simple, right? And even the harmony is only one, five, five, one. Right, it's very simple. It's and all the beauty of this phrase of this nocturne is in the right hand. And for for example, in the beginning, instead of starting the piece on the downbeat, because he could easily um, start the piece on the beat without an upbeat if he was a mediocre composer, right? But with this one note upbeat, which is something that Chopin loves to do so much, so. And then we have this dotted rhythm. He could have also written, right? But this dotted rhythm, what do you think these dotted rhythm do, like compared to if we just play them? Um, I think it can drag the piece so it yeah. can be emotional. Yes. You mean if we play it uh, without the dotted rhythm, it could drag, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with the dotted rhythm, it kind of give, give us a rhythmic a pulse that kind of pushes a little bit forward, right? And then we have this F sharp on the this sec downbeat of the second measure, which clashes with the left hand, which is an augmented fourth, right? So we should really enjoy this dissonance and then and then we have this um, so I think if we play the skeleton of the melody and go back to this then we really get to cherish you know what Chopin had to work with and what he added to it to make it so beautiful okay so my second question for you is on the first page right this do, re, mi, fa, so, so gets repeated four times. Could you tell me how do you feel, maybe each time, do you feel they are um, slightly different? And if, if they're different, how do you feel they're different or how they are connected? Are they getting more and more excited or are they getting more relaxed or is one of them more open or is one more sentimental or just anything that I think the first one that they play is um, the most, like, I guess you could say dramatic because mm -hmm. then the next one is like an echo. Mm -hmm. And then the next, and then the ones after them, I feel yeah. like, I feel like they are repeats of the first and second one. Then the third one's going to be dramatic. And then the fourth one's going to be an echo. Okay. Oh, that's a good plan. But um, I like the echo. Uh, so it's a reflection of what we played, right? So I think, um, do you also have a pianissimo marked for the third time or the, or that's if that's just my I am SLP version? Uh, yeah, I have it. Yes? Okay. So I, I imagine this piece, maybe I'll propose my plan now. Um, it's the first one I, I like. It's very open. It's our opening statement of the this piece, right? So it's very, uh, very generous, like you said. The yum. And this phrase stops on the fifth chord. You know, on the fifth chord as opposed to the next time the phrase gets repeated, it closes on the, uh, on the tonic on the first. Like you said, it's like an echo. It could be an echo. So this one is more easygoing. Echo. So this one really closes the phrase. The first time in the fourth measure, it kind of goes, right? And this one closes in. And I like the idea, um, as marked in the music, to make the third statement of this melody the least and the most poetic and the most as if you are just floating on the sea and kind of 
a, a, a memory. And this time we have a very interesting dissonant note in the left hand, an F sharp. And then we could bring that out. That's something that's completely different from before. And the last statement is the only time that the harmony completely changes and leads up to different places. Here, so I feel like we could... And this is also the widest range we get so far. And then we descend. Right? Could you try one more time, just this time really try to um, feel how each time progresses or re relaxes and just try to make each time a little bit different, just like how we say things. If we say um, the same thing, like today is a beautiful day or something, we go to the park. Uh, and if you say it repeated four times, probably it means something changes, right? Right. Yeah, let's try, try it one more time. Just the first four statements. better yeah do you want to try um the third statement as mark we could try once i like that this time you tried more generous the third time maybe we could try once that uh just experiment how does it sound if we really go down to pianissimo this we can start right there the uh, third statement Daniel, I like it. I think either way you could keep experimenting and to see which way you like the most. Um, and in this piece, is there, um, it's set in C minor, which is quite sorrowful, right? Yeah, quite melancholy, right? Yes. But there are uh, four measures in this piece that are, we open up to a major and open up to a little bit of sunshine. Um, do you feel where that is or do you know where we modulate. It's a very brief moment. It is over here. It is a measure 36 to 38, 
I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, 36 and 38. Um, yes, that's a very, we have some um, dominant seventh chords right there, right? But I think there's another spot I'll point it out to you. It's around 29. And 29, before that, I'll play from two measures before that. We are in F minor, and all of a sudden, we transition into the A flat major just for a very brief four measures. And then we go back to the minor. So I feel like because this piece, um, it's all in the minor key and we only have a very small window of time uh, where we get to enjoy this warmth um, of the major, right? Could you try maybe from uh, two measures, uh, from maybe 27, just to try this transition into the major section? Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Or anywhere you feel comfortable starting around that area is fine. And then we are back to minor, right? Yes, that's great job, Daniel. I think we're running out of time. Um, but thank you for playing. It's beautiful. I hope you keep working on it. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Great yeah. performance.